We're heading into a building that was built over a hundred years ago. Man, this place is a disaster. We have one day to pull out whatever objects of value we can find. Oh, look at that. This place is huge and nasty. <laughs> it's a scary place, brother. And you never know what you're going to find around the next bend. Holy. Whoa! My name is Jay Jake. These are my buddies, Dan and Mark. We make money finding items left behind in abandoned buildings. Whoa. If it's rare, look at that. And it's got history, oh, yeah. we'll make a deal for it. Then restore and resell whatever it takes to save a piece of American history. Jay, where are we heading today? Mark, we're going up to Scranton, Pennsylvania. We're headed to the Scranton Lace Factory. The Lace Factory? Uh, I mentioned that to any of my buddies. That sounds like a good way to get your ass kicked. <laughs> Back in the turn of the century, Scranton was a coal mining town. Textiles were real big, and Scranton Lace Factory was uh, one of the biggest of its time. A place this big, there's got to be some good stuff in there. 600,000 square feet. I believe it. Back in the day, when you were making lace, it was like printing money. <laughs> the factory's getting turned into condos and office space. This might be the last chance we get to get in there and salvage some things out of there. All right, guys, we're here. Wow, check out that clock tower, guys. I want to go there. If this company has their own clock tower, they had a lot of money. And if they had a lot of money, they probably got a lot of cool stuff in there. A lot of cool stuff that's worth a lot of money. Scranton Lace started in 1897. At their heyday, they had 1,400 employees working for them. They produced the finest lace available, and the company provided it to the masses. I struck a deal with the owner for 1500 bucks. He gave me the keys to the building, and whatever I can carry out, I can keep. You guys ready? I'm ready. Oh, man. It's abandoned. There it is, Scranton Lace. Wow, check that out. First thing we see is the brass inlay. It's beautiful. They spared no expense. That's a great sign that there's going to be valuable stuff inside. All right, guys. Mark, you got your walkie-talkie on you? Yeah, I got it. This place is huge. Yeah. The Scranton Lays Company was an industrial powerhouse. It's the classic boom and bust story. The demand for the Lays went down, it was cheaper to make it elsewhere, and they had to close their doors. When we go into a building like this, we go to the office. That's where they kept the money. If they kept the money there, there's going to be items of value there, too. Wow. I think this is the office area. Look at the hole in the wall. I bet your safe was in there. You want to pull it out? Yeah. Look like they use a couple sticks of dynamite. We heard that at one time they paid their employees in gold, and now we're in the vault. Oh, why do I just want to go up? Down. I pull down this machine. Now we have to figure out what this thing is. And it's got a key. So apparently something opens up here. How is that like a pink pattern? Yeah. I, you know what? I think that might have printed checks. We check it out. It's made by the F and E company. It's a check protector. You would slide a check in here, punch in the amount, it would stamp the check. That was a special ink so that they couldn't forge it or erase it. These machines shredded the ink into the actual fibers of the check paper. Stop people from counterfeiting checks, right? Yep. In this business, there's a buyer for everything. I'm thinking we can get anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks for this. That barely puts a dent in the 1500 I laid out, but I'll take it. Jay, check this door out. They got there, man. That looks like it was on Look at that, man. They blew that door right off and it survived. <laughs> I like that. That's a quality door right there. When Jay found those vault doors, he loved it, like a kid of Christmas. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that puts a rise in his Levi's. We have the other one. We got the pinstripings intact, and the paint's starting to crackle a little bit, just the way we like it. An old guy told me one time, hey, Jay, anything that has a story behind it sells for more money. You clean that up a little bit, that pinstriping's just going to pop. And it's worth even more if the story's true. Check that out. Yeah. Lock still works. Yeah. That's a beautiful color. I don't just sell this stuff to collectors. I use this stuff to make new things. These doors may have no value to somebody else, but to me, I can make something new out of it, and I can preserve history. 
Abandoned buildings are like a crackerjack box. You never know what kind of prize you're gonna find inside. And you never know what's just around the bend. Oh, what we got here? We turn the corner, and what do I see? Guys, this is incredible. A gymnasium. So what do you think, Mark? Did they spare any expense to make their employees comfortable? No, nah, man. They got good bosses. What do you think, guys? We got enough stuff to go through here? We go in there, and it's like all the misfit parts from this factory ended up in the gymnasium. There's tons of sewing machines. Dan, remember that one time I, I thought there was some worth in those machines, and I took 50 of them home from that yeah, yeah. fur factory? <laughs> we couldn't give them away. 1937. What's it say on the top here? Office remodeled in 1937? No, that's neat. It's a shame that it's damaged. Yeah. We don't think we're going to find anything. And here comes Mark. Yo, Jay. Check it out. What is it? For your lady parts. <laughs> is it a cup dispenser? It ain't a cup dispenser. It, you would have thought he was holding the Ten Commandments. Hey, what is it? Modest because of the Whisper Soft fabric cover. It's a tampon dispenser. That's a piece. Here, Mark, do I have a nickel? I'll give it to you to put in there and try it. All right. Here we go. Oh. Oh, Mark, I think you were ripped off. Coming across an item like this is not surprising. Women played such a big role here at the Scranton Lace Company, especially in World War II when the men were over there fighting. I would take this, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Believe it or not, the Smithsonian has the same item in their collection. And if it's good enough for them, I'm sure there's a guy out there willing to pay me a few bucks for this. Let's call it another 150 bucks. This building's as big as 10 football fields. There's no way we're going to be able to see it if we all stay together. So we split up, and off we go. All I want to do is check out that clock tower. Dan and I, we're off to the clock tower. Mark's off on his own. Dan and I have been doing this a lot longer than Mark. Mark's the newbie on the crew. No admittance, huh? We'll see about that. These abandoned buildings are run down by years of decay. There's broken windows, leaking water. To tell you the truth, it's a little bit creepy. It's dark. I mean, this is how most horror movies start out. I'm in something out of the goddamn shining. As uh, Dan and I are making our way up to the clock tower, you got mold and must, and layers of lead paint peeling off. It was nasty. All right, you first. Man, I just feel like I'm stepping back in time up here. Look at the ironwork. Now, they had to set this clock somehow, so I wonder how they set it. What do you got in here? Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. What the heck was that? As soon as we saw the heart of this clock, I knew Dan would be all over that. One thing that Dan loves, and that's tinkering. He loves taking things apart, putting it back together. You give him a motor that's not running, he'll get it running. Look, this is where they set the time for the clock face out front. Inside the clock tower, there was a small face that controlled the big face on the outside. They would set this and... So instead of extension ladders all the way here, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. some guy they turned the hands. They wouldn't have to climb outside to, the big to, hands. to turn the hands. There's no computer boards in here. This is all gears, man, brass gears. Look, here's the cog that comes out, and that's what turns the hands. We'll change the time. Change the time. <laughs> why did I want to get to the top of this building? Like, I'm here, why not? Remember, you're there to catch me. Oh, man. Oh, my god. This is craziness. This is the gold mine right here. Time to get up, Scranton! Like, I'm here, why not? Oh, man. Oh. oh wait till you see this, Dan. Oh, we'll get up there. <laughs> oh, oh, look at the bell. Jay loves climbing things. There was no stopping him getting to the top of that clock tower. Oh, my God. Where the heck are we going? Oh, my God. This is craziness. When we're up in this clock tower, you just see how enormous the Scranton Lace Company is. Everybody in the town set their clocks by the Scranton Lace Company clock tower. And there was no excuse to be late for work. So we see the bell. 
It's a 1927 Benelli belt. They were everywhere. Churches, universities, courthouses, you name it. Oh, man, is that cool. That is just... It looks like it's it's got shatter cracks in it, but it's not really cracks at all. It's just it's just from the casting. Oh man, can you imagine? I mean, the kids could never be late for dinner if you had one of these at home, man. Should we check her out? Drop the hammer on her? Wail it, man. What? Time to get up, Scranton. Woo! Yo, is that you ringing the bell up in that tower? Mark, I'll tell you what. This is the coolest, coolest bell tower I've ever been in. When I was walking around by myself, I couldn't find nothing. They were up in the clock tower ringing bells. Nice. I mean, that's just the way it is for me sometimes. Dude, these guys are killing me. When that bell rings, all I hear is money. A bell like this is worth about $6,000. But this is a Scranton landmark, and the owner told me, hands off. This place is a disaster. Oh, man. Oh, this is nasty. Basements are like attics. It's where you put stuff and forget about it. <laughs> That's where the unique items are. Hey, look at that. Huh? Look at that, man. That's an old bowling shoe. Oh. What's a bowling shoe doing here? This is Scranton Lace Company. I did hear that they took care of their employees. You know, they're giving their employees kind of perks and stuff. You don't think possibly. They gave them a shoe? Only one? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they were having a big sale down here. Look, don't open the package. Probably when they were going out of business, you know? What do we got here? What is that? It looks like braille. We find these cards with perforated holes in them. Probably tells the machine what to stitch. Pull that out for a second. We find the machine that this actually was fed into. Uh, that would just be a bonus. Yeah, yeah. Add this with the machine. Uh, put this aside. God, let's get the hell out of this creepy ass place. Yeah. It smells creepy. Yeah. It feels creepy. Like a dungeon. No, it's like my mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I gotta go to church for that one. Dan. Holy shit. Look at that thing. Look at that mammoth. Wow. Man. That's right. a big loom. Here's a loom the size of a locomotive. 50 foot long, three stories tall. It just screamed industrial revolution. Now, if this loom was a woman, Dan would want to date with her. But just look at all the grease fittings on it. From what I heard, there used to be one there, and there, and there, and there. Yep. Providing the lace for America. Oh, check this out, Jay. Look, patent maker, Nottingham, England. I traveled a pretty far distance. Just now, just imagine this, 1890. They shipped this over. The only thing that was in 1890 was sailing ships and steamships. Yep. And they're bringing workers with this machine. Nottingham lace was so expensive to import, they not only brought over the looms from England, they brought over the workers who knew how to operate them. Hey, you remember them cards from down the basement? Yep. They were in this machine somewhere. Now, the thing is how and where. Oh, here we go, up in there. Look, all the strings go up to it. Dan, I'm going to hop up top and see what's going on up there. Oh, Dan, the catwalks in this place are... Yeah, I'd watch that. There was no end on it. Well, this one's a little busted. Watch it! Whoa! Yeah, I'd watch that. There was no end on it. Well, this one's a little busted. Whoa! Watch it! <sighs> he gives me a heart attack when he does this stuff. You all right? Here it is, right here. Yeah. That is just so wild. I see the card with the punch outs. These little punch outs tell these strings what to do, which makes this amazing lace. Before these big machines, all lace was hand done. These machines made it possible to make an inexpensive lace that could reach the masses. Right in there. So 
like an old bone scoreboard. What would it be doing in here? This is the manliest lace machine I've ever seen. The scrap value on this loom is worth a fortune, but it can't fit in the back of my truck. It's staying right where it is. Yo, Jay, you out there? Yeah, Mark. Come here. I found something. Mark radios in. He's got something interesting. Oh, guys. Look at this. Oh, man. You got to be kidding me. Surprise, surprise. It's the holy grail. A four-lane bowling alley in the middle of the factory. Sign me up. Oh, where do I get a job here at Scranton Lace? We find a bowling shoe in the basement. Mark finds a scorecard. Now it makes sense. This was a certified bowling alley. 1956 to 1957. A big part of this business is nostalgia. Guys, this is the crate that these came in. You can't get any more nostalgic than a 1950s bowling alley. Look at this. Yeah. Look, Dan, there is a bowler guy out there. Just, you know, he wants that. He wants that, and he wants this with that. It says all American on here. Guess where it's made? China? No, America. Yeah. <laughs> these vintage bowling items are money. From the right collector, I bet we can get a thousand bucks for this stuff. God bless America. You know, God bless places like this. Because you know what they were saying? Thank you. Thank you for making us money. Mark, you gonna set us up? Come on now. So we're in a bowling alley. Let's bowl. Oh, yeah! Come on, guys, we're on break. It's Scranton Lace. All right, All right here we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the winner get? The winner gets anything I want tonight for supper. What about us? Same thing with us? Yeah. Steak, some lobster. That's it, man. All right, deal. Mama needs a new pair of shoes. The great Scranton Lace Company at the heyday, 1,400 employees. In 2002, it was down to 50 employees. And they had to close their doors. All right, let's get out of here. Come on, Mark. I'd say we're walking out of here with about $1,300 worth of stuff. Not a bad day's work, but it's still not going to put food on the table. But the thing with the greatest value would have been worthless to anybody else. It was the doors. When I saw those doors, I knew they had potential. Once we got back here, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Because what I try to do is I find an object, and I try to give it another life. Guys, those doors that we got from the Scranton factory, I had an idea. Holy smokes, look at that. Wow. Turned it into a gun cabinet. We started with the doors. Now we went with a kind of Western motif. This whole body's made out of steel. The hinges we got from an antique shop. Nice, that looks yeah. good. This will go inside the cabinet and forever tell the story of the Scranton Lace Company, and the memory will live on. Time and materials, it costs about $3,000 to make this gun cabinet. And I'm thinking we can get anywhere from five to $7,000 for it. And not only do I get to make money on it, I get to preserve a piece of history that otherwise would have been lost. We got to make a living doing this. Isn't that crazy? How awesome. That is, that is.